Welcome back to GIS Analysis at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to develop a map of canopy closure. So the first decision we have to make is what do we consider a tree? So let's assume we consider a tree any pixel that is taller than four meters. So we could symbolize that in our canopy height layer. And under classified, let's do two classes. And then the method will be manual. So then our break value will be four meters, which will be our threshold of what we consider a tree versus something that's too short to be a tree. So then anything above four meters will color green, anything below four meters will color some other color. So you can see we do have quite a few pixels that are above four meters. So what we want to do is estimate what's the percentage of pixels that are above four meters, and that would be our canopy closure percentage. So we'll use a tool called Block Statistics, which partitions in non-overlapping blocks or squares and calculates the statistics within each square. Our input raster will be our, for our canopy height raster, but we have to have that as only pixels that are above our threshold. So we need to back up and use the con tool to create a raster representing our forested pixels. So from our canopy height raster, our expression or query is, is a pixel value greater than or equal to four meters? If that's true, one indicates that it's a forested pixel, a tree, the height above four meters. If it's false, it's too short to be considered a tree. So our threshold here is four meters. And then we'll output that to a raster called forest pixels. So the output raster forested pixels, zero represents a pixel that's too short. One represents a pixel that's greater than or equal to four meters. So now we can use the block statistics to create a forest canopy closure map. So our output will be forest canopy closure percent within a block if all the pixels are forested, it would be 100%. If none of the pixels are forested, it would be 0%. If half the pixels are forested, it would be 50% canopy closure. So we need to specify how big is our block going to be. In this case, it'll be 10 pixels by 10 pixels, which will give us 100 total pixels. And then if we scroll down, what is the statistic type? So we want to use sum, give us the sum of all the pixels within each block. And then just OK to execute. The output, if we look at the cell size now, our original cell size was 1. So the output, we now have forest canopy closure ranging from some value to some value. And we can change our symbology. So let's stretch it and we'll go from some reddish color to some greenish color. And then we could double check. So if we drag our forest pixels on top and then make them semi-transparent. So if we go to display, let's make them 50% transparent. And then let's zoom in on one that's a high pixel value. So if we open the attribute table, sort descending, so these are high pixel values. There should be 95 out of 100 pixels in, in this pixel. Here are the five pixels that are non-forested. One, two, three, four, five. Checks out. And then the final step is, if you wanted to, you can convert these to square polygons using the raster to polygon tool, I name my output polygon features canopy closure percent squares. Then let's classify our square polygons by 
the canopy closure. And then if we go to classify, let's do it by define interval. We'll define our interval as 10% class and then OK. Then we have the lowest class is 75 to 80% canopy closure. Assign that some color. And then the highest class we could assign some color. And then the middle class will assign some color. Then we have our classified map of forest canopy closure. And most of the area is, in this example, between 80 and 90% canopy closure.